Corn School is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Bernard Tobin here at the Southwest Ag Conference, joined now by Dr. Tony Vine from Purdue University. Tony, thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, and it's not our first time. I think you've uh, we've done this three or four times over the years at SWAC and other conferences, and we always tackle a, you know the question you know where does corn yield come from? And it's tough to do in five or seven minutes, as you would agree. But uh, you, your presentation today was you know really about lifelong learning about you know corn. Growing corn is about continuous learning. Yes, so two things. Number one is we already have much bigger corn yields now than was the case uh, in the 70s and in the 1980s. Uh, so we've had roughly a 70% yield improvement in the U.S. since 1980. Uh, so we've already arrived to some extent mm -hmm. with big corn but big corn is never big enough yeah. and so there's this uh, push to try to get to uh, higher yields in the future and we really want to emphasize that it's we can get there with perhaps no more nitrogen mm -hmm. than what we're applying today right right and a couple of things uh, yeah, many aspects to it you've talked about nitrogen and we'll talk about that in a second but I want to focus on one of the key things you, you talked about and that is the role of the number of kernels in kernel weight plays in, in this this rise that we talked about you've done some research looking at older hybrids newer hybrids what did you learn about weight and kernel numbers I've had the really good fortune of working both with DeKalb Air mm -hmm. hybrids mm -hmm. over a 38-year period of commercial introduction, as well as with Pioneer mm -hmm. Air hybrids over a 70-year spread wow. in commercial introduction. These were hybrids uh, where the seed was created for me, which allowed me an opportunity mm -hmm. to compare them side by side. Wow and allowed me to compare them either at multiple plant densities or multiple nitrogen environments. And basically what we learned from this is that basically these yields are improving uh, at the rate of 1.6 to 2.0 uh, bushels per acre per year mm -hmm. over that 38 or over that 70 year time horizon but that the yield gain is coming not so much from being able to get more kernels okay. per unit area, but higher individual kernel weights. And so that was a surprising story because we've always been encouraged to, uh, yes, these modern mm. hybrids are more stress tolerant. You can plant them at higher densities. You can plant them at higher densities. They will still achieve yep. an ear. They will still produce yep. kernels. And the goal then has always been to have more kernels, kernels per unit, square foot, square yard, square mm -hmm. meter. Mm -hmm. And now the uh, emphasis is on, well, you know, perhaps we're plateauing a little bit yeah. in terms of how many kernels we can actually produce per unit area of land. And now the focus is, is needs to shift towards trying to produce bigger kernels right. rather than more kernels because that's the trend and in these modern hybrids. So how are these, so it's, is it genetics, is it, are we feeding the plant better? How are these kernels getting bigger? These kernels are only going to get bigger if they uh, experience uh, good conditions mm -hmm. during the first two weeks or so after the silks have been pollinated. Mm -hmm. And that's a critical uh, period, and that critical period we call the lag period. Mm. So the kernel weights aren't really gaining very much, but there's a lot of cell division going yep. on in the endosperm at that time. And this sort of sets the stage for how big the kernel is eventually going mm -hmm. to get. Yeah. And if you've got a lot of very active cell division, you've got good nutrition, not just nitrogen, but good balanced mm. nutrition with the other macros and micronutrients that are essential at that time, then I believe there is a potential to realize a bigger kernel than, uh, than you would in a situation where there's a stress, not just mm -hmm. a water yeah. stress, but also a, mm -hmm. a nutrient stress. Now you've done a lot of work on split in application, all in up front, split, late. How is that strategy sort of, sort of working with, uh, to sort of fill those kernels? Right, so uh, we've had a lot of interest in uh, reserving some nitrogen until after the V10 stage. We're often now applying to V12 yeah. uh, corn 
with the last 40 or 50 units of uh, nitrogen per acre. And there the emphasis really is on trying to encourage those kernels that are pollinated yep. to essentially set a bigger potential yield by expanding the window of what we call the grain filling period. Mm. And so we want that, that window of actual grain filling to be as long as possible. Right. We want the leaves to be as healthy as possible for that duration so that they're always producing new photosynthesis. Yeah. And uh, we want that, uh, that kernel weight gain to be uh, at its maximum. Yeah, yeah. So that plant is healthier, longer, you've got a longer grain fill period, and right. it's using that nitrogen, right? And it's, yeah, and in fact, at the end of the season, uh, about 64% of the total nitrogen that's in the plant is in the grain. Right. So the grain is taking that nitrogen from new uptake as well as remobilizing. And what we're trying to do with a timing, a later timing of mm -hmm. nitrogen application, is to try to keep encouraging the plant to focus on newly available mm -hmm. end from the soil instead of remobilizing that nitrogen from the leaves. Because if you remobilize yeah. it from the leaves too soon, then the leaves are going to uh, die off faster. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be able to photosynthesize as long as they should to drive the uh, endosperm uh, formation in the kernels. Awesome. Well, Tony, I um, always love having you on the corn school. We learn a lot. And as I say, um, yield is a big story. This is just part of it. Thank you for sharing this. And we'll have you back again. We'll talk some more. Yes. And this big corn is a journey. Yes. It, it's not where we want to be yet, and particularly not at today's commodity prices. You got it. Thank you so Thank much. You.